opening notes for the fantasy cruiserweight makeover. Here's a bio and history of the division with no further ado. We start on March the 31st, 1980 with Marvin Camel, who beats Mator Mate Palo, the Yugoslavian fighter, by 15 round unanimous decision. Sanctioned by the WBC, Camel goes into the record books as the first junior heavyweight or cruiserweight champion of the world. More champions follow him. We have SD Gordon, Carlos De Leon, Alonzo Ratliff, Ozzy Ocasio, Bernard Benton, John Mark Mormek, O'Neill Bell, Johnny the Entertainer Nelson. All competent fighters, none able to set the world alight, none household names. So I often compare the fortunes of the cruiserweight division to the super middleweight division. The super middleweights came four years after the cruiserweights. The first super middleweight champion was Murray Sutherland, the Scottish man. He took the vacant crown against Ernie Singletary to go into the record books as the first super middleweight champion of the world. But do not be misled. Sutherland was KO'd or stopped five times and all in all was beaten at least ten times before he got his first shot against the tough but nowhere near world class Ernie Singletary. So the first super middleweight title fight in effect had two decent journeyman fighters contesting it. Kamel and Parloff, in fact, in my opinion, are superior fighters, so technically the cruisers get off to a better start than the super middles. Difference being while cruiserweight champions like Ocasio de Leon and Johnny Nelson and S.D. Gordon were prone to stink the place out on regular occasions, the super middleweights rapidly picked up the pace with Thomas Hearns, Iran Barkley, James Tony, Nigel Benn, Sugar Ray Leonard, Roy Jones, Chris Eubanks, Joe Calzaghe, Steve Collins, Mike McCallum, Bernard Hopkins. And even today, we have um, Andre Ward, Carl Frotch, who fight the final for the Super 6 later on this year. Lucian Boutte waits to fight the winner, but only if he gets past Glenn Johnson tonight, which could be a good fight. The perception was that super middleweights were middleweights who couldn't make the weight, or light heavyweights who were too small to compete at light heavyweight. It went from that to an elite division in its own right. No, it doesn't have the legacy of the middleweight division or the lightweight division or the welterweight division. That's because it hasn't been around long enough. So it's an elite division in its own right. The cruiserweights remain unfashionable as ever with a few highlights from Evander Holyfield, Dwight Muhammad, Kawi, David Hay. Today we have the likes of um, Dennis Lebedev, good fighter. He beat Tony Yee last night. We have Marco Hook, good fighter, but um, they're, they're not quite ready for the pound-for-pound pound ratings yet. No. Steve Conum, competent, not very exciting, but good fighter. The Cuban guy beat him, decent fighter, but you know, these, they're not, these are not pound-for-pound. Pound. They're not elite fighters by any stretch of the imagination. So we're going to make over the division with a fantasy cruiserweight series. I first listed 10 fighters and had to stretch that to 11 when I forgot one great fighter. If I don't name him, you won't know and I won't feel so shame, so I won't say. You can disagree with any of my selections as you like, agree, disagree, comment, and we can argue robustly, but if you choose to use vile language or profanity in a mean-spirited way, your comments will be removed and you'll be blocked. So this is the Boxing Beats and Rhymes channel saying peace out.